everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report in Los Angeles. And I'm so excited to welcome Ephraim Owens from The Voice to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Ephraim, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. And even better now that I get to spend happy hour with you. Well, thank you so much. We're going to be toasting to that. Yes, Definitely. For sure. Let's start off by doing that. And I want to no. say... Your blind audition of Labyrinths Beneath Your Beautiful was mesmerizing. You got the coveted four chair turn really quickly. So what were you thinking as you saw all the coaches spin around for you during your performance? Was it different than you envisioned? Uh, I would I would say it definitely was different than I envisioned. Um, I went up there with the mindset that all I needed was one chair turn to change everything. All I needed was one. And so to be received the way I was and to get four uh, blew my mind. Uh, I wasn't anticipating that. I know I knew that I put a lot of work in to be able to present uh, the quality of song and performance that I did. Um, but I was definitely humbled because I was singing in front of four legends um let alone john legend but four phenomenal performers that have a, a well a deep well of experience and history so to get all four of them to turn to do them enough to impress them was mind-boggling it was wild well the coaches gave you amazing compliments including gwen saying she heard both soulfulness soulfulness and rock in your voice how did you feel about all this incredible feedback you were getting? It was awesome. It was very affirming of, uh, you know, my 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 story and journey was is the fact that I'm 36 years old and this is the first time I really put myself out there as a performer. And many a times uh, that I held back was just questioning if I had the skill set to be able to do um, a show like this and to be an artist. And so to hear them affirm me and all the encouragement was wild um and then also you know to hear her uh have many different examples of r&b and rock it's like yes you hear me like i'm not just this i i have a, a well of experiences and life that i want people to be able to hear and connect to when i sing so it was awesome well your family was so excited and then you brought out your daughter evelyn ann and you guys sang John's new song, Nervous, together. What was that like? Oh, that that was amazing. I mean, as, as a parent, you know, everything I'm doing here, as much as it's chasing my dreams, it's to uh, teach my daughter and my son who wasn't there uh, to never give up on your dreams. And so for her to be able to come up there, you know, she's daddy's little girl. So anything I do with her, it, it takes it to the next level. And so that I could share that experience. And um, my wife thought she was going to be nervous, but again, she's daddy's little girl. So we're, we're, she's cut from the same cloth. She was about it. And it was cool that um, John could connect with that because he's also a dad, you know, and, and he shared that it's his daughter's favorite song too. So it was a cool moment. It, I, I have listened to my performance multiple times, but definitely in, uh, particularly watched that segment because it just meant a lot to me. It was really beautiful to watch, but how tough was it to make your coach decision knowing your wife is a huge Reba fan? I, it, it, words cannot uh, express how tough it was <laughs> because as as I communicated my wife lost her mind when she found out that Reba McIntyre was going to be uh, a coach and she I mean all the way until I got on that stage she's like Reba 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 you know um but I thought about it a lot um, and I didn't want to make an impulsive decision. And as much as I have so, so, so much, um, uh, so many good things to say and so much respect for Reba as an artist, as an actress, as a producer, as everything that she's done as a, a horse equestrian advocate a, as I am, like I had a lot of respect, but in my gut and in my heart, I felt like uh, for this season of life and what I'm really trying to do do as an artist it just uh made the most sense to me uh to join a team legend what are you most looking forward to as you move forward on team legend uh one of the things that i think he does uh, better than most is he articulates and communicates via his music 
uh, his heart and finds ways to con connect with people in, in very relevant, authentic ways. And as an artist, that's what I want to do. I don't want to just be a, a great sounding voice. Um, and hopefully when people have watched my uh, audition uh, and, and play it with whatever way they can, can view it, I just hope that people can go, man, he was a great vocalist. He was a great singer, but I like felt something like he, he I felt his passion. I felt his, as uh, Niall said, his angst, as John said, I felt his urgency because uh, when I'm singing, I want people to connect to that. And so I want to tap in to that deep uh, knowledge that John has and how he's been able to do throughout his career. Uh, I want to do that. And I've looked up to him forever. So it's just cool every moment to be able to hang out with uh, uh, a, a icon and an idol that you've looked up to uh, for so long. So anytime, if we're just sitting on a bench, I'm going to be happy. <laughs> Ibram, I've got to ask you about this. I've learned that your little brother, David, was on The Voice in 2019 on Team Kelly Clarkson. So you were probably alarmed for that journey. What what was that like compared to what you're going through now? Well, um, it's very different uh, looking outside. Uh, we actually started that process together. So uh, I'm one of seven, uh, me and three of my brothers, when they had uh, in-person auditions here in Indianapolis, Indiana, we went down there, did the whole audition. My brother, David, and myself got a call back and he moved on and progressed and got on the show and all that. And I did not. So uh, it was awesome to see his journey. And, and he was probably the biggest uh, uh, advocate for me in this process. Well, I'm sure your whole family and your hometown of Indianapolis are just so happy for you. And I am so happy for you to take time out to be with me on Hillary's Happy Hour, Ephraim. Yes, ma'am. So, it's my pleasure. Thank you. I want to raise a toast to your continued success on The Voice. Yes, let's go. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and joy. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers.